Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for being here today. Uh, first press conference of the year and uh, uh, we just had our fan fest last night. And uh, I think it's it's a tremendous event in a lot of regards. Uh, number one, I think obviously our fans, getting our fans into the building and seeing our new team this year is is one, the familiarity side of it, of our new players and returning players, but also to uh, getting some reps in, some valuable reps in uh, that's not a practice. Uh, it kind of replicates exactly what you want to see in a game uh, in live action. So uh, I thought we had a lot of good looks on five on five and power play penalty kill last night and uh, three on three and some shootout stuff too. So uh, very valuable in that regard. And now we move on to uh, game week here. The three guys who uh, weren't in, uh, what are the chances that they could be available for uh, Augie? Yeah, I think there's a high likelihood there. You know, I, we went through some practices here early in the week and they got nicked up, unfortunately, a little bit. And, uh, you know, just kind of precautionary yesterday of not putting him in a situation where maybe it was too soon for them to do that. So I guess to answer your question, a high, high likelihood of all three. Uh, you guys usually play Manitoba this game. How did this come about to play Augustana? Yeah, it, and it happened a few years ago um, when Augustana first went Division One, uh, not being in a conference yet. Uh, we reached out to them with Garrett Rubboin being their head coach, knowing Garrett very well, and just said, hey, you know, at the end of the day, we're doing some scheduling. Normally, we play University of Manitoba. Would you ever be interested in, in playing an exhibition game? And, and they said, absolutely, yes. And, uh, and so now we're here. And that was a few years ago on scheduling it. And, I guess to my knowledge now, the, the release is out as far as us playing them non-conference down the road here in a few years, and I think that's awesome. I think it's a it's a, a excellent program in the CCHA here, and uh, you know it turns into like an I-29 rivalry at the end of the day of uh, creating that too, and, uh, and Garrett's done a really good job in his first few years there. Were you in the same freshman class as Tarek Howard? <laughs> Absolutely was. He was my roommate. In, in the dorms or right in the, away? In the dorms and then in an apartment in my third year. Where did you guys, what dorm were you guys Walsh in? Walsh Hall. <laughs> what was it like living with uh, Tarek? Uh, well, I don't want to get into the weeds too much, here, but, uh, <laughs> but just to let you know, I grew up in central Alberta in a small town. He grew up in southern Alberta in a small town, and, and uh, we, we played youth hockey against each other all the way up. So he wasn't my favorite person in the whole world, uh, button heads all the way up. But... Um, you know, there was no social media back in the day and you didn't really know who was coming onto campus your freshman year. Uh, and sure enough, my parents dropped me off at the, the circle driveway at Walsh Hall. I carry my bags up to my dorm room and find out my, my college roommate is Tarek Howard, which really surprised me, right? But at the end of the day, just kind of getting to the, the last chapter of it right now, he's one of my best friends. Um, love him uh great person uh communicate a lot with him and uh it's funny how life goes right at the one at the end of the day who your friends are is it going to be odd seeing his uh, son on the other side on saturday yeah it's going to be uh yeah it, it's awesome it's an awesome story you know a will growing up here playing for grand Forks central uh playing junior hockey and now playing division one hockey and uh i think that's awesome it says a lot about you know youth hockey and in the state of North Dakota and, and players coming out of here and playing Division One hockey. And uh, I know he's extremely proud, him and his wife Tammy are extremely pr proud of him. And uh, I know he's on the other bench, so we have to make sure that it's it's game-like again. Um, Louis Jamernick, uh, what, what has he brought to you guys on the ice uh, over his time and what can he bring this season for you guys? Uh, just consistency in his game. Um, you know, you're always getting his best uh, when he's when he's out on the ice. He doesn't waste a shift. Um, and he really sets a bar for the team as far as expectations on how we play here. And, uh, um, you know, I, I love him in the fact that, you know, you can put him at center, you can put him at wing, you can put him on any line. He plays every situation. And, you, and you're going to get the best from Louis Jamernick, which pushes the bar on our up on our team as far as what the level you have to get to. And and then you look at the leadership side of it too. Now you know him being our captain, and no better guy to to lead our team this year than a guy that's been through the the, the battles and the wars for the last few years. And and uh, and the last thing I got to say about Louis is. There's not many guys that can focus on being a top end division one player, being a captain of that team and also getting a degree in commercial aviation uh, with the time management skills that you need for that and the focus and the, and, the, and the habits and details that you have to bring. So on a lot of different levels, I'm proud of him, uh, but I'm absolutely proud of him this year of leading our team and being our captain. What do you like about Caleb McDonald's game? 
Yeah, you know what? Uh, and again, I was a D man a long time ago, and you, and and you always try to pride yourself in playing as a as a guy that can defend very well, that can move pucks efficiently, that can add to the offense. That every time you go over the boards, you can trust that guy to make the right decisions. And you know, I know it's a little bit different from him coming from a different program, but you know, he's really immersed himself and really gotten com comfortable on on the way we play and. Uh, and just having a guy that he doesn't look like a sophomore out there. He looks like a, a, an upperclassman out there as far as the way he moves and the way he reads and the way he plays. What steps do you want to see from Tanner Comzak coming back as a sophomore this year? Probably consistency. You know, like, you know, I think in Tanner's game, you know, he's he, he's a guy that cares and he plays extremely hard. But, you know, a guy I thought last night he made some pretty good puck touches last night. And I think one of those things is making sure that when you're on the ice, you're, you're playing that game like you're talking about Caleb McDonald, about being a good defensive player that can that can move pucks, that can add to the offense a little bit on the rush. And a guy, a guy that's just a solid player, game, shift in and shift out. So I would say just probably the consistency side of it. When you went to watch Tanner in the AJHL, I'm guessing you did see Caleb there. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he played with him. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he was a committed player, and and he played there. And obviously, where our focus was on Tanner then, and uh, and uh, you know, um, you know, it's funny how fate is again, right? At the end of the day, we have Tanner, and now we have have Caleb here, and they're good friends, and uh, and and now they're playing together here. But yes, they they did play together, and they both played well for for their team. Uh, last year, obviously, Dylan Simpson brought in a whole new defensive core and worked with it. This year, he's doing it without any seniors or grad students. Uh, what kind of credit can you give to him about making your defense so strong? Ton of credit, ton of credit. And I think, you know, he's one, Dylan's one guy that I don't have to tell him, like, what he should have to do. It, it innately comes from him of, you know, playing that position, but also, you know, he was a mentor, a leader in, in Columbus Blue Jackets organization in the minors in Cleveland. He was a mentor there to the young defenseman. And, and uh, you know, he, 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 I think communication is the biggest thing, you know, whether it's individually with a 1D D or the whole group of eight of just communicating and, and what our expectations are, how they have to get better, um, what they need to work on. So he did a really good job that way. And he's continuing to do it this year as well with our three new um, freshman defenseman. Obviously, uh, um, you know we have a transfer coming in there too. So half of our half of our D is turned over. But at the end of the day, he's done a really good job of of trying to solidify this group and play as a cohesive unit. Um, no, we touched a little bit on the Augustana contract that you guys are going to be doing. They'll also be coming to the Ralph in five, six years or whatever. You mentioned the I-29 kind of rivalry, but the fact that it will extend, you know, the love of hockey between North and South Dakota, maybe not North Dakota and Minnesota. Can you touch on that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, obviously they have a program they're growing right now in Augustana and, you know, Sioux Falls is a great city. And, uh, and at the end of the day, you're seeing some players come out of South Dakota now, you know, as far as that, that are going to be playing at the D1 level. And, uh, you know, I, I think obviously that's going to help the growth of hockey. But for us too, like, you know, when you look at, you know, some of the some of the rivals that we have in St. Cloud and Duluth, some of the regional rivals, I think this adds to it too, um, you know, down the road. And I think it's a situation here where, you know, Travel is a big thing sometimes in non-conference and, and any time that you don't have to get on a plane and you can go down the road four and a half hours, uh, them coming here, us going there, that's a big deal. And, and they're a good organization. They're, they're on the rise and they've, they've, got, they've done a good job so far and I think it just makes sense. And you touched on this a little bit during media day, but playing a D1 opponent in your exhibition game, uh, how much do that, does that get you guys ready for this tough non-conference slate? Well, 100%. You just, the last word you said is a tough non-conference slate. Like, you know, this is one of the toughest non-conference, I think, uh, schedules we've had in, in a few years. We've had some tough ones. But, you know, now you're playing a team that's a Division One opponent that had success last year against some really good teams. And uh, and yours have to be up. You have to be sharp. And, and that's why, like, this Fan Fest game that happened yesterday, that was really important for us instead of just going right into the Augustana game. So we have some things to work on with a new group here. That's, you know, and there's going to be some little bit of rust and some things to work out. But, again, that's what the start of the season's for. And, and that's why this game here, I think both sides are going to get a lot of value out of playing each other at a high pace, high competitive game. Yeah, you mentioned the high pace. Uh, you know, Augustana, uh, it, it's their first time up here, of course. So I'm pr sure they're pretty motivated to play you guys. How do you guys match their energy? Well, you know, I, 
anybody that comes in here, whether it's an exhibition game, non-conference, conference game, you're coming into the Ralph, right? And I think you're going to get the best of everybody coming in. We know that. And that's why we've had good records here at the Ralph. It's because we know who we're dealing with coming in and the motivation that they have. It's no different. At the end of the day, it comes down to us executing at a high level, us out competing, out battling, out out working teams to, to get to where we need to go. And that's why that it's so important that they, at the start of the year, you have to bring it and bring it at a high level. Especially for the freshmen and the transfers too, how important is it for them to play a game and experience the Ralph for the first time? Well, exactly. And I think yesterday, you know, I think there's a thousand or a little bit over a thousand fans here. I think that obviously that was, you know, some guys came to me yesterday, some guys that played junior hockey goes, that's, that's the most I've ever played in front of was yesterday was that many people, you know, coming from some junior hockey teams. And I said, well, wait till you see this weekend and wait till you see the following weekend. Like at the end of the day, that's why it's so good to try to get immersed into what that is. And I think this weekend against Augustana, it's going to be, I believe, a packed house and and uh, and they're going to get uh, they're going to get a little bit of experience of what that looks like.